What's going on guys? I have another video today for you all as I'm going to be recapping week one in my fantasy football season and also previewing week two. And this was my first week back in the fantasy football after taking a break off of it last year after my league didn't get back together and we got it back together this year of a 10-man league and you can see uh, this is the starting lineup I had last week that actually got me my 1-0 victory. My highest scorers of the week were Drew Brees and Blair Walsh with 17 points helping me get my victory and I'm going to show you my opponent's team now as this was a very close matchup here in week one and it came down to the wire actually as I had nobody to go on Monday night but he had Ray Rice and so I knew that Ray Rice had the capabilities to score a lot of points and he got 21.3 he only touched the ball 13 times I believe but had two touchdowns on the ground and the Ravens had the ball late in that game and they threw the ball into the end zone I forget who Flacco threw it to but there was a pass interference call and I'm like oh my god they're the one yard line it's gonna be a Ray Rice touchdown and sure enough he went into the end zone I believe that was his last carry of the game and I won the game my opponent had 96.3 whereas I had 97.9 and so it was very close he needed 16 yards to tie me but they took Ray Rice out of the game and put in Bernard Pierce and if you're wondering what the scoring we have in our league and why we have decimals, we do for receiving yards and r rushing yards, you get 0.1 points per yard and so you can have decimals. I actually like this a lot more compared to just having only round numbers. And then for quarterbacks, I believe we have every 20 yards as a point. And this is like the only scoring system I've ever used because I don't usually play in a ton of leagues at the same time. I like to focus on this one. And this is the one I, I played when I started out playing fantasy football only like three or four years ago. And so my final score in the week, of course, was 97.9 which was the third highest score total of the week but only eight teams played we had two teams for some reason with a bye I'm assuming there's something to do with the schedule I think every team's gonna end up getting a bye or maybe there's two teams that get a bye every week if I check week two here it shows that we actually have five games going so I'm not sure how it's going to work and quickly before we move on to week two here I'm gonna show you guys my week one bench and the decisions I made to start and sit certain players and the only thing I could have done better was to start Torrey Smith over Victor Cruz, which would have netted me 1.2 more points. And I believe I'm going to start Torrey Smith this week against the Philadelphia Eagles because of his big play potential. I hope he gets a lot of targets in this game. And I almost started David Wilson, actually, but I figured because he was a rookie, I wasn't really going to start him until I actually saw what he was going to do and how much of a role he'd have in the game. He didn't have much of a role at all. He had a fumble and .4 points, so good thing he sat on my bench. And now here's a look at my opponent's bench, and he could have beaten me if he started one of these players over Greg Jennings, who had a measly 3.4 points this past week, and now he's doubtful for week two, and so he had Reggie Bush and Stevie Johnson with over 10 points on his bench. And now we'll transition into week two, and this is not the starting lineup I'm actually going to use this week. Well, it might be, but it's not set in stone yet. I'm going to watch some more of the games from last week through NFL Game Rewind and see if I want to start some different players, but I have Brandon Lloyd on there because of all the targets he got in week one and I'm also doing some debating right now about what I want to do with my wide receivers this week I have Roddy White on my bench right now but I'm not sure who I want to start with him or Victor Cruz because with Roddy White of course you have Tony Gonzalez Michael Turner and then Julio Jones getting all those touchdowns and then with Victor Cruz I have him and Akeem Nix and then Ahmad Bradshaw I have a little bit more confidence in him to score touchdowns and what I might end up doing is starting Roddy White and Victor Cruz and taking off Brandon Lloyd and I also did make some waiver wire moves or not some waiver wire moves mine didn't work when I tried to do them but I dropped Titus Young I wasn't really sure why I drafted him anymore and I also got rid of Greg Olson I wanted to get Alfred Morris from Washington I know it's a Washington running back and the Shanahanigans could probably kill me if I started them but I went for him anyway and I didn't get him I didn't get Randall Cobb who I placed the waiver claim on and I know it can be kind of dangerous to make some of these moves early in the season especially with a guy like Kevin Ogletree who had a breakout week one and you never know what he's going to do in later games and so I did drop Titus Young because I had regretted that draft pick and I wasn't sure how reliable he'd be this year and he didn't have a very good week one and so I dropped him and thought I could take a chance on Kevin Ogletree but I'm not going to start him I just wanted him on my bench I can either have him as trade bait later if I want to add another running back or I can just keep him if he has a great season and then I also added Donald Brown just because if I wanted to play another running back I could play him he's not a great running back like I'm not really that confident in him but he can score touchdowns and he is the starting running back in Indianapolis and so that's the only reason I have him and I dropped Greg Olson because I know 
Vernon Davis is a better tight end. He's going to get me a lot more fantasy points probably this year as long as he stays healthy. And he has a week nine bye. And so I figure I have a lot of time now. I can wait and see which one of the players on my roster is underperforming. And then I can add a backup tight end later. And it really makes no sense for me to have Greg Olson on my bench because I can't start two tight ends. And I'm not going to start him over Vernon Davis regardless of the matchup. And I just don't need a backup tight end until week nine. And so I figure I can take a chance and have some guys on my bench that hopefully have good seasons or break out or get more of a focus. I mean, Kevin Ogletree, you never know when Miles Austin's going to go down with a hamstring injury. And so I have Kevin Ogletree on my bench and hopefully he has some more good weeks and I can start him later and he gets me some good fantasy points. And so, so far, my team is projected to score 116 points. And this is my opponent this week who has a very impressive roster, I would have to say. And he was the guy who drafted before me in our fantasy draft, and he took A.J. Green the pick before I was going to, and I had to settle for Victor Cruz, and then he took Percy Harvin ahead of me. And so he has Tom Brady and Stephen Ridley had a great week one. I want to watch that game, though, and see how good he actually ran in that game. And then Percy Harvin had a great week one. I expect him to run well in week two, unless the Colts double cover him a lot. Then Reggie Wayne bailed out Andrew Luck a ton in week one. A.J. Green, he can score touchdowns. Jimmy Graham is my quarterback's tight end, which doesn't have me very happy because I hope that Breeze throws touchdowns elsewhere this week hopefully like Darren Sproles or something like that so I'm hoping that Adrian Wilson and Patrick Peterson can come through and get some nice interceptions against Tom Brady this week and I know I have a very tough matchup this week in week two I have a very good opponent I like his roster a lot but hopefully I can come through with the victory and I have to make the right decisions on my roster first so you guys can leave comments in the comment section telling me who to play but I'm gonna show you my opponent's bench right now and I'm not sure if he'll make any more adjustments to his roster earlier in the week or anything before the games come up on Sunday but he has Michael Bush tonight if you want to play him and see if he can vulture some more touchdowns away from Matt Forte and then he has Alfred Morris Deshaun Jackson Trent Richardson but if I was controlling his team I think his roster would be set right now I wouldn't change anything and so that is my week two matchup this week guys I have a very good opponent but I have to make some decisions on my part to get the victory this week not sure what receivers I exactly want to start yet so you guys can leave comments in the comment section let me know what you think I'm kind of leaning towards right now starting Victor Cruz Roddy White and then Torrey Smith and so that's about the end of the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys like these fantasy football videos, I'll be more than happy to bring them to you every week, recapping my previous week and previewing my next week. I'm not sure if I want to do more than one video on this a week. I can, I guess, before the game start on Sunday or Saturday to show you guys my final roster or something like that. But let me know what you guys want to see. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully it'll be 2-0.